what are the films that, um, well, the older Jean-Luc Godard uh, are like in my first memories of being like blown away by, um, by a film and by also understanding that it was um, a, a, a form, an artistic form that, uh, that was worked and thought and everything. So, because before that, I think, um, you know, I wasn't seeing the editing, I wasn't seeing, I was just taking in the, the, the story. So Jean-Luc Godard, I would say, Vivre sa vie, which is in, um, in English, uh, living her life, I think, something like that, with Anna Karina, and it's, a, it's a, an amazing um, woman story also. Um, and I loved the, the way he was um, uh, cutting and editing the story, uh, which makes me feel like that we were very close uh, to, to her inner life. There is not a lot of dialogue, it's really a lot of expressions and I, I fell in love with that actress because of, of that film and also with oh wow, that's what we can do uh, to tell a story. So I would say that, um, Jean-Luc Godard movie. Then I, I um, Pierrot le Fou, which is um, in English, um, Pierrot the Crazy, I guess, something like that. I'm, I'm translating it. <laughs> um, um, uh, it's also some, a film that, uh, yeah, that I was really, really impressed with. Um, then David Lynch, right? Um, I remember uh, seeing Wild at Heart uh, when I was, yes, 15, something like that. Maybe a little younger, I don't know. And it made an impression on me like crazy. Like, um, I remember going out of the movie theater and, and, you know, not even seeing the cars. I was like, almost, you know, uh, hit by cars because I was so um, in it and also, uh, yeah, in the, in the fantasy, in that, in that um, way of working on magic. And then, of course, I, uh, I went back uh, to Everest Your Head and all his first films and Blue Velvet and um, Milan and Drive. Uh, who inspired it? it I, we were inspired by Long Drive in one of the sequence of Dream States, actually. The sequence with Bosia uh, was really for me a way to make a kind of tribute to, um, to David Lynch's um, vision of Los Angeles. And then Tarkovsky, Andrei Tarkovsky, um, The Mirror. I think The Mirror is the first film I saw of him. That's a, an amazing, amazing film on memory. What is, mem you know, what is memory? What is the, the way of telling how it works, you know, by, uh, by layers, by, um, by abstraction and dreams. There is a, one of the most beautiful sequences of dreams. In, uh, in one traveling, in one shot, in that film that is really impressive. And then the first, the opening with her on a barrier, with the wind that is caressing the herbs, and you just... And so it's a film that he did on, on, on his mom, on his mother, I think, and um, on the memory of his mother. So that film really, really um, impressed me, and then I saw The Sacrifice. Which is also like it's his last one, and so those two films were my entry point to Tarkovsky, and I'm still like studying what he did um, technically, and um, and uh, the way he was telling stories. Are, I think it's Solaris. I mean, all his films. Obviously, there is not a lot of films <coughs> of his. And then for Dream States, I was really inspired by. Um, a film by Marguerite Duras, who is a writer first, and um, she wrote Hiroshima Mon Amour, 
And eventually from there she wrote m plays, she's an amazing um, novel writer. Uh, and she eventually started to direct her own film when she was like 50 or something. And when she discovered that medium, she wanted to stop writing. And you can feel her passion in it, uh, how she transitioned but from um, uh, writing um, to images. And so she's doing um, a film called The Truck. And it's also a road movie, and it's the weirdest road movie you can ever imagine. It's the, 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 she wanted to do a film with a full cast and everything, and she couldn't get the money together. And she is a character. And so she invited her friend, Gerard Depardieu, to do a reading of the film. And so the film starts like that. She doesn't have the other actors, and she only has him. And she starts reading her script with him. And eventually from there, we found herself in a truck that is only traveling in the suburbs of, of a little city in France, in, nor in the north of France. So there is not a lot to see, <laughs> but she, sh she is showing it through the windows. And it's that crazy dialogue between that old lady that is a that lost her mind and uh, was eye-checking on the road and that dude um, just took her in, her in his truck and it's their relationship. Uh, why are you here? What is, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful film that, it, that really inspired me um, on, uh, on, on Dream States. Mm -hmm. Then um, uh, I, I I love um, Wang Kawai's um, work, and especially what is the title of it? Um, something with wild. Something wild. Something wild. Exactly. And um, it's the first time that he's working with Christopher Dahl, and it's the first time that he's experimenting his um, his way of of improvising. Um, the scripts because he never he, he never write scripts before uh, shooting which is which gives something absolutely interesting um, to his um, to his movies it gives like a kind of mystery you never know where you go and it's on that film that he's finding his uh, special um, connection to that uh, director of photography that did, you know, like one of, to me, that is one of the best uh, director of photography. Um, and so, in terms of colors, um, the colors that um, that he was able to pull that universe, in fact. So he's really like it's the first film where he is like uh, um, uh, getting there. And so, in the mood for love and all of that came from that experience. Then John Casavetes, of course, of course, um, <coughs> at many level, on many level. Uh, so I saw John Casavetes' films like pff, really early in my life. I mean, I, I, the first one was, I think, Woman Under Influence, I guess. Yes, and then I saw Minnie and Moscovitz, and then Shadows, and. Um, the relationship that he has um, to to Gina Rollins and the way he's writing is something that is um, rare and so powerful. I was I was really amazed that um, the first time when we were shooting Dreamstead, we, we went into um, a video sh uh, shop, you know, and they didn't we couldn't find Casavetes and I was like what you guys have John Casavetes and you don't have his you know his films in the shop for me um, it's masterpieces and it's uh, it's still relevant um, I've seen a, a rewrite recently um, uh, a woman under influence and um, there are still things that I I'm discovering and I love the social portrait of America that he's doing. 
I think he's so so on point. Uh, it's so not um, uh, egocentric. It's so open. It's so real. It's so you know he's he's uh, an inclusive um, director. So yes, Casavetes and Shadows, uh, of course, of course, those two characters. I mean, for me, um, my background is in acting, so it was like a window of hope. <laughs> I was like, wow, you can do this and have um, this type of actors and um, improvisation and relationship to music. And uh, so it's everything I, 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 I love in films. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, so and then I want yeah, want to say that Chantal Ackerman is somebody that mm -hmm. um, impressed me and made me is, is still inspiring me um, in many ways. Uh, I think it, she has a very courageous way of making films. Um, I love uh, her interviews, how she mm -hmm. speaks about films. Um, how she went there, you know, she did her first film by herself uh, with two friends in her kitchen and then she did the second one in the same way because productions were like, yes, we want to produce you and everything, but they were putting, like, you know, some, some, uh, some uh, limitation to her creation, to her creativity. So she said, no, I want to do it um, like I did my first film. And so um, I love the, the independence of her work. Um, Jeanne Dillman is one of, I don't know, I mean, I think every uh, film school is, is studying um, that film that is uh, on time, uh, something that is that, uh, extraordinary. So it's a film that is shot on, um, there is no ellipsis. It's, it's real time and it's a simple story and it's passionate. You could watch it for hours, actually. Who else? So I also thought a lot about Melvin Van Pebbles, Sweet Back. Um, Melvin Van Pebbles, who is like one of the head of the black exploitation, who worked with empiric editing, um, uh, music that is like very beautiful and very active um, uh, topics that are really weird and interesting and another um, look at his community and uh, I, I was I, I love that film like I, I saw it when I was 20 something and I was like what oh there is also one of the film of um, Ash Tipon Stan. Ash. Happy Chat Pong. Exactly. Happy Chat Pong. Uh, the film um, Moon, Moon at Midnight, something like that. I, I may be wrong on the title, but the film is him traveling through um, the countryside on a train and asking the people to um, complete the story that had been you know told in the city before so he's on the train and he stops in villages and so he gives the story you know a beginning of a story and he he he, he asks the people that he's filming in the next um, city to complete whatever has been told in the first um, place and so it gives a very magical and in the same time um, it's a mixture between documentary and fiction because uh, it's real people he's really on the train and he's really like there is no story that he he he's not leading the story he had just like I think few sentences to start with and then um, it is crazy. It's like, it's one of, yeah, it's uh, all his work. You know, it's uh, the Cemetery of Splendor. It's beautiful about dreams. This one for the form, like the, the idea of, uh, of fiction and reality, how, it, how you can uh, blend them and, and, and wave them into, um, into a fantastic story, right? Um, yeah, so. I think 
we got it. I think it's it's about it. <laughs> I may have forgotten some yeah, people, but yeah.